All right. What's up? What's up? What's up? We are live on YouTube. We are live on one of our um, uh, Facebook pages, the Wally Show Facebook page. We're live. And also we're live on the Wally Show YouTube page. We're live on the Wally Show TV on Twitch. And we're also live on X at Wally Show. Okay. So listen, you guys, we're going to open up by talking about uh, chasing um, Dallas. Now, I know a lot of y'all don't watch Chasing Dallas. Y'all don't see it for Chasing Dallas because Wally ain't on Chasing Dallas. But tune in for this review. Um, uh, shout out to the station head. Y'all head on over. I need y'all to share, like, and get into it. I'm going to make this short, sweet, to the point. Short, sweet, to the point. Give me a second. Um, and this show was a snooze fest. And let me tell you why. I need y'all to send it to the cast of Chasing Dallas, every single one of them. Go to their YouTube page. Go, go, I mean, go find these people. I need to see the one, the messiest people. And if you do that, I add you as a moderator. Okay. I need to see if you can do some leg work. You do some digging. Um, but I was watching this show, and they got some cast members on there, Seven Deep, uh, 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 Quincy. Uh, they got Ted Lee. They got Robert. Now, this picture that I found, this is like an old one with King Dior, Trey Howard, and Robert, right? Amazing duo. The storylines were better. I had a, a conversation with uh, Reese G and the former producer of Chasing Dallas, and we, we got into some things. I said, this season is trash. I left Reese G some voice notes, and I criticized Markel of Chasing Dallas. And see, I left a voice note so he can share with his people, because whatever I say it privately, I can say it publicly. When the show opened up, this new season of Chasing Dallas. And it had Sean do the first green screen. It had Jet Jeff. And it had, you know, Barbie Black Rose performing at the Latino Gay Pride. The reason why I say this was boring is because you're trying to make it seem like they sound so good live. They sound a mess live. The crowd wasn't into their music. The crowd didn't understand the music. They're performing against people, performing in front of people that speak a lot of Spanish. And Jet Jeff ain't rapping in Spanish. He rapping in English. He's a Mexican Eminem. He's the DEI pick to be on Chasing Dallas to fit the Latina quota. Unqualified to be on Chasing Dallas with black folks to make it seem like Chase of Reality is so multicultural. But they could have picked a better qualified Mexican with talent. The Mexican people that I know, they know how to put up drywall, they know how to sing, and they know how to throw down in the kitchen and make some good old Mexican corn. And they got some good old Mexican laundry detergent. Now, Jeff Jeff, boring. Music, not that great. Then Ted Lee gives his green screen. Now, Ted Lee, let the world know why I don't F with you. You pretend like you be falling in love with these men, like you're talking, talking about my man. He dated me and he cheated on me. He cheated on me. He and, and 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 he proposed you a whole lot. You slept with me when you was with that senior citizen. We had we was intimate. It was a one night stand. But stop trying to front in front of the camera that you this faithful bottom. You ain't faithful. You slept with me while you was promoting this senior citizen, this older man. You thought you was going to finesse and get you a show. 
You thought you was going to be on the real bottoms of Dallas, and it didn't happen. The dude was a whore. The man was almost in his 60s. Of course he's going to cheat. The statistics show that gay men are the most unfaithful demographic in all of dating. When you compare them with the straights, gay men is at the bottom of being faithful. They worse than straight black men. And you fit that statistic, Ted Lee. And then when I was on my friend of the show, um, Trey So Raw TV, Ted Lee said, I'm going to sue Wiley. Sue me for what? Sue your barber for spraying all that permanent spray on your chin. Sue whoever told you to keep on putting that permanent high, high, highlighter on your eyebrows. Go sue that person. You literally in this show pretending like you just the darling of Dallas. You a whore. You slept with so many people in Dallas. Just check your Instagram. You're not faithful and you're not even a real estate agent. Girl, you is a glorified makeup wearing leasing agent. Leasing agent and real estate broker is two different professions. Baby, you be at the leasing office giving people apartments, signing them up. That's not a real estate person. That's not a person showing houses. I knew that you wanted to real estate, that you ain't selling no houses and get fat commission checks and you renting an apartment. But you've been in real estate X amount of years selling all these properties, getting all these commission checks, but you rent a one bedroom and a one bath. Okay, that don't make no sense. So in this particular episode, then it go like Astro in the recording studio said he was on tour. I like Astro. But production setting you up for failure. That's not a tour. You travel with your homegirls to go out of state to perform at an empty club. A tour is you got a flyer, you selling tickets, you 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 got a QR code, etc. You ain't on tour. You in the same city as your homegirl. You pull up to a club and they play. They let you perform. Because ain't nothing else going on there for people to buy little drinks. It was about 10 people there, less than 10. I'm being nice giving it 10, maybe three. And if it was so many people, why you didn't pan the camera to all the people that was in the audience? Because there was no audience there. It was your homegirl, who she was screwing, her baby daddy, because he there for a free drink and then go eat him some wings after the club, they're not there for your music. Especially when they make sure to get there before they charge a cover at the door. So I, I didn't get into that. That could have been scrapped. The Telly, that, that, the Mexican, the DEI Mexican, um, he should have been scrapped. I mean, he, he just wasn't, I didn't see it for her either. Uh, Quincy, attractive, apps, the, he got the apps. You know, he used to be on the apps. He's in a relationship now with another artist. That's supposed to be successful. But on the reality show, working for free. We're going to get into that. Quincy, you dating a guy seven deep. And how this relationship started, according to your words, he tagged you in a post on Instagram, jumped in your DM, you give him the badissi, you desperate for a career in a storyline, and y'all in a relationship. The last time I heard of Quincy, 
he was getting whooped at Trey Howard, the one with them glasses, at his apartment, at the clubhouse. You know, in the apartment, they have them amenities where you can have public events. You know, these black folks went to this beautiful place and they were fighting. Quincy got whooped, cried to his mama. You know you in pain when you cry for mama. Mama, they hit blood splattered everywhere. That's why Trey Howard got evicted. That's why he had to flee to LA. He lost that apartment. You can't be fighting in your apartment at a public space. It's a white neighborhood with white folks. You black people coming there thinking this South Dallas, thinking this is Compton. And they was boxing and Quincy got hurt, blood splattered on the walls. He cried. I felt bad for Quincy. And then I see him this season. Good looking. I mean, body. He's a decent artist. But baby, being a reality star, that ain't your ministry. You nervous. You shy. It looked like you was held hostage. I almost had to contact the Department of Homeland Security to just do a safety check. Because the way you was talking like you was held against your will. Yeah, my name is Quincy and I'm in the relationship with Seven D. I'm like, what? You boring. Look at this. You're just not meant to be on television. Stick to the music. Your personality is gone. It put me to sleep. The way that you were talking, what do y'all do in the bedroom? Just sleep? You just lay on your back and seven deep, put all them inches in you, and you just lay there? Because if you show, I'm live on YouTube too. Get over to YouTube. If you was boring and dry in that green screen like you in the bedroom, you ain't going to keep seven deep. Ted Lee going to get him because at least Ted Lee, he's wild in the bedroom. Don't let that crayon colored beard get you twisted. He's very nasty in the bedroom. I don't have no complaints about his bedroom activity. The only thing I have to do is to cut back all that black sheen spray because it messes up the sheets. Other than that, other than my high expensive laundry bill of cleaning that and getting that black stuff off my sheets, he's he's good in my book. Now, when it come to Quincy, you got to go, baby. Chasing, the only thing when I saw when I was looking at you, you was literally chasing me to going into a sleep. I caught myself dozing off watching this show. I'm sorry, Quincy. You got to go. Now, Markel, he want to be everybody friends. Just to produce the show, we're going to get into him. But, baby, I'm telling you, as the highest rated show in Dallas, Texas, Quincy got to go. Let's move on. Now, they get into Ted Lee. Again, this was like the chasing Ted Lee and that fake beard. He talking about the dude he was screwing. They went viral. The dude went on and finessed and went somewhere else, cheated, and slept with somebody else. Ted Lee talking about, we got to read, we're going to get married. And they had the audacity, production, to post the ring. It looked like you went to Kroger's. You went to Aldi's. You went to Walgreens, got some aluminum for you, cut it down. And wrapped it around your finger. That ring looked like aluminum foil wrapped around a finger. Then when I went back to your social media, because just because you blocked me, because we put it out that we smashed, I can still see your social media, girl. I'm a troll. I can get access to and I can go on my troll account. You had that ring on for years. Anyway, dude cheated. 
You want to be so dramatic in your apartment, took your Dollar General glass, and you broke the glass on the floor. I'm over it. I'm like, girl, if you don't sit down, nobody is challenging this. I'm telling you, Markel, Markel, with all due respect, brother, you got to have somebody to wake it up. The girls you got now, and I got some more reading to do, they ain't got it. Because if I was sitting in that apartment, I would have shut it down. I'm like, shut up, you queen. Erase that off your face. You can't get mad at this senior citizen going and hopped on another pin because you've been cheating all through Dallas, from the north to the east to the south to the west. Stop it. You is a hypocrite. Look at your face. You pretended to the world like you got a beard, that you got a lining, that you got these big, thick eyebrows, and that's not the truth. Because when you was at my home and you washed that stuff off your face, you look like a male version of Whoopi Goldberg. I'm not lying. I'm like, oh. So I understand why you wearing all that, but that's false advertisement. You is a walking catfish. You a real life catfish. Take all that off. Since you want to be the star of the show, you a mess. A male Whoopi Goldberg, that's what I said. And if you think I'm lying, tell him to take all that off on live. I can guarantee you, you see Whoopi. Let's go to Seven Deep. Seven Deep supposed to be this new addition to the show. Seven Deep, rapper, successful, he claimed, never had a top Billboard charting hit, never had a gold record, never had a silver record, never had a top plastic record. Never. He just known in the little bitty LGBT space. That's the only thing on, and everybody in the community don't know. This man is dark skinned. Went to Family Dollars to the bleach section. Bleach. Took it, bleached part of his beard, bleached part of his mustache, and talking like he's the booty eater. Well, at least you heavily sanitize while you eating booty. But please, why do you have to bleach your beard and your mustache? Then he started going to play his music, I'm Falling Asleep. As the producer, I'd have been like, cut. We need some people to drop. I got to antagonize that. I'm like, I don't mean no harm. You good looking, but the only thing I want to do in this studio is get my cakes ate. I don't want to hear you rap because this is just boring. Let's wake it up. Let's get some Mexicans. We got Jeff Jeff. You know his cousins know how to they they, they sell that good, that good, that good loud. They already crossed the border. Let's get him to come bring some of his homeboy. Roll up a couple of look, you know, some of that, some blunts. Let's get high. Let's wake it up. Because you trying to act like you this Grammy Award a uh, billboard chopping artist. And you're not. You is nothing but a middle age, never happened rapper that's on a free reality show. I know it's painful for me to say that to you, sir. But that's the reality. For you to mention Cardi, don't even utter her mouth, utter her name in your mouth when you're not even living up to nowhere near her accolades. Because if you were that successful as an artist, you won't dare do a show for free. Cardi didn't do that. She did Love and Hip Hop. She gave a little of that yoni to the good producer, DJ Booth, the other DJ from Hot 97. And she got an upgrade to become a successful artist that we know today. 
She FedEx that Yoni to the right producers, the right radio personalities. And she became a household name. She left Love and Hip Hop New York. And she's known now as Nicki Minaj replacement. She is the current queen of hip hop. We're done with 7D. Now we get to who I believe it is the leading, the face should be the face of Chasing Dallas right in this season. And that is Bank Barbie Rose. Clearly, she give me star. This is a trans woman. I couldn't tell unless she... <laughs> Start talking about what I got between my legs. I wouldn't be able to tell if she just be woman. When she performed in the first scene and she said, suck my whatever, that just throw out of her trying to look like Megan Thee Stallion. I'm like, girl, this is just, okay. But her name is Bank Barbie Rose. That's a false advertisement, Bank Barbie Rolls. Number one, you don't have bank. Number two, if you call it the plastic surgery and you want to say Barbie, okay. Rolls. I don't see Rolls. But if you want to have that as your rap name, Go right ahead. But she was showing her cakes. She looked good. She rapped incredible. She is one of the incredible artists out of all, like Astro, 7D, Quincy, Jet Jeff. She's like the best musically. Let's move on from her. And she should be the face because they need to give her more camera time. Because I remember when. Reese G was producing the show, and I told Reese this privately. I loved her scenes. Like, she was very adamant when uh, Malaysia Booker was deleted by a man. Um, Arby was very upset about it. Like, she, this bank, Barbie Rose was just like upset. And she got, she had a very real reality moment. It was real in reality, one of the realest moments of Chasing Dallas history. And, I mean, Reese G produced that scene very well. One of the greatest scenes ever in the entire franchise. Um, and, I, and I feel that way. Um, I, I, really, I really, really do feel that way. That Bank Barbie Rose is the best person ever as an artist but I feel that she's diluting herself trying to go out just to do music. Baby, give me your personality. In this first episode, grasp my attention. Let's talk about you falling out with Reese G. Let that be your storyline because Reese G is still controversial. People still talk about Reese G. You got to talk about that. I don't need to see you up there trying to be a drag queen. I thought you was a trans woman. I'm confused. Now you want to be like RuPaul? Now let's get to Robert, and we live on YouTube. I'm live on YouTube. Robert is looking good right now. He's doing, you know, he got baptized. He said he stopped doing nails. He's opening up his own salon. The reason why I don't get excited, because King Dior said he had a salon. Now, King Dior, respectfully, I'm not coming for you. You supposed to be so grand, so intelligent, such a businessman. You signed a lease with a fake catfish landlord. The person didn't even own the building. Well, according to my source about that T, King Dior knew the person didn't own the building. He just wanted to have a salon so bad, he just dealt with the scammer, just to produce it up. He thought he wasn't going to get caught because the place was foreclosed, been empty for a long time. He thought, hey, I'm not going to get caught. 
whatever. And eventually his lies, they got caught. They wanted to build it. He had to go to evict them. This man was shopping, buying hairspray, buying, you know, dryers, um, shampoo, aprons. And to find out you did all that for a building you didn't own and that landlord wasn't that landlord, Paul, not Paul. Clout chase it at its best. But Robert said, I want to open up a salon. I would come out better if you just say you're going to do a suite. Stop trying to say you're going to do a salon. The reason why, if you let Ted Lee be your realtor, a person that is a glorified leasing agent, that's already a failure already. And the little snippet that they showed on Chase Me Out, I have some bad news for you. I don't have keys to the building. That's literally realtor one-on-one -on -one to get the keys to the property so your potential client can walk the grounds. You know why, Tanley, you ain't had the keys to the building? Because you're not a real estate agent, you queen. You clock chaser. You not a real estate agent. That's why you ain't had the keys to the building. You. So, Robert said he's going to get a salon. And I really want him to get a salon. He's very talented. He could do nails. He looked like he could take your Kia. You know, but he's sweet. He do passion shows, ballet. And very sweet guy. I like Robert. But I feel like Robert, respectfully, you got to bring the energy in the shop. I don't need to hear you saying you about to get a salon. And to that salon got about two years of success. Then you can talk about it. You girls be shopping, signing leases, and automatically you entrepreneur. Is it a profitable business? Do you have clients? And I saw your IG, and I'm showing love. You the real thug. I'm, you know, I want to rat your face and et cetera. But don't talk about something that, if it's not produced yet, I'm checking your social media. I don't see nothing that came out yet. I went to the city to see any permits with your name and register anything. Register. I haven't seen it yet. So I talk to you offline and maybe we can go there with our cameras and be there for your grand opening. But as of right now, the salon that you claim that you want to have don't exist. As of right now, it could exist in episode 12. It could be in the finale. But I don't on your IG. Only thing I see you with that red of your job, signing people up to get tested. You better make sure you test Larry Reed. Can you test Larry Reed? Because I heard he got that package. Uh, you be testing people. Making sure they ain't got the, the outbreak. That's it. I don't see you at no salon doing hair with your name clients in that pan with cash out Venmo whatever I don't see none of that I just see you in your car driving talking to your IG followers you look good you're very attractive but baby where the personality hello Tell me how you seen that personality. You can't get by. You got to get that personality. See, I can't kiss your butt. Robert, I'm calling you out, my brother, to call you up. Bring that personality. Let me remind you, Robert, on last year, when your homegirl claimed she was a teacher with Dallas Public School System, according to Markel, she took my spot to be on Chase at Dallas. Sit on down, share this live. Like, she's supposed to take my spot. This teacher that's trans by day, but want to whoop and drag folks and fight when she lose in the ballroom scene at night. 
She get mad at me because I criticize her on my website on whythetroll.com. I criticize her saying she's boring, dry. Don't nobody care that she's trans, a teacher. We don't care. I think she should be quiet saying that in Texas. We're really not that open with trans teachers, especially the DEI picks. We're just not that open. This woman went so far to record herself in the classroom. You can't do that. And one of the parents allegedly was offended that this reality fake to be UFC fighter is recording their children in the classroom. Because she's trying to respond to me to show the world that she really is a fourth grade teacher. If my child was in that class, in that social studies class, I would, with haste, take Wiley Jr. out of there. I don't want my child in that classroom with this woman be boxing folks because she losing in the ballroom scene. I want my child to be with a teacher that is a winner, not a loser, not a chop. Because in the ballroom scene, they call people that lose a chop. And that's exactly what she is. Now, I want to move on from that. Robert, whatever, she, she, you know, bring your personality in the next episode. This episode, I give it an F. Now they got J, uh, JC, the photographer, from L.A. and the celebrity chef Marquise. And then somebody said, can we move on? I'm so sorry, sis. When you get your own show. You can move on how you want to do it, okay? Because I own what I do, I can take my sweet time like Ted Lee took his sweet time with that permanent marker and drew them eyebrows and drew in that and put that black Afro sheen spray on his chin for his green screen. So I'm going to take my time breaking down this show. Thank you. So... JC, the photographer of LA, the celebrity chef Marquise. Tell me, talking about he's a celebrity chef. Don't tell me that. Because I'm looking on his IG. I want to see celebrities on top of celebrities. I don't see nothing. Only thing I see Marquise, the chef, chopping up broccoli in his kitchen. That's the only thing I see. I see Marquise on Chasing Dallas chopping up broccoli and serving the people soggy green beans with extra salt. I don't see a steak. I don't see a lamb chop. I don't see no fish. I see sheep broccoli and soggy green beans submerged with old grease. And you say you want to be a chef. Now, the reason why I'm giving Marquise a win that I want to see more of him, not only because he got my name, my first name, not only because our name Marquise is French, not only because he's attractive, that line it was crisp, it did not look Dollar General, Manufacture it look natural. It look like he smell good. Teeth look good. I more so want him to, to give me a private dinner. Paul, make sure you set it up, Paul, to book him for a private dinner. I eat the soggy broccoli just for him to just cook in my in my kitchen. So book him. I'm a celebrity. It's not about that. All that. I'm a celebrity. So book Marquise. Find his IG. Book him. He cook for me. Yeah, and for my subscribers. Yeah, so you see what I'm saying? Get the book. Now, he in his kitchen chopping up the broccoli. Serving it to Ted Lee. And Ted Lee was like, and then Marquise, let's get into the story. He said, my goal is to be a restaurant owner. My grandmother, she, you know, she passed away from, from the uh, pandemic and, you know, the C word, you know, the pandemic and stuff. And I, I really do send my condolences to Marquise. Um, I just wish I was there to hug him 
you know, I didn't have to worry about bringing him a meal because he could cook for himself. He's a celebrity chef. So he was eating that, and then this new this this uh this person, um, J C, is a photographer from L.A. Anytime you say you from Los Angeles, California, baby, that give cap fake fraudulent. Uh, anytime when somebody come from LA and they're a photographer, watch out. That's a scam on the line. He talking. Then this man going to say, I just want y'all to know I signed a deal with Paramount. I'm going to have one of my songs featured on Norris Art, the movie. All the original cast. Why are you telling us something that haven't came out yet? I, this is why I don't believe you. Stop telling us something. It may not come out. Wait till it, it, it's on about the debut. It having trailers about to come into the, the movie. Then, then you can tell us that you got a song on Nor one song on Norris Art. And the song probably in the credits when people about to leave anyway. Or it probably a piece of a scene for like five seconds when somebody going to the bathroom or taking a dump. Stop boosting yourself up like it's going to be played all through the movie. And the movie haven't came out yet. But you claim that you signed a deal. Then so no contract, though. Mm -hmm. And Marquise, he was like, he's just giving fraudulent. It's giving scam. Come out his mouth. I feel you, Marquise, while you was chopping up that broccoli. He was giving fraudulent. And I get you. You want to be a chef, I guess, because you cook in your chick, you, you, you cook in your kitchen that make you a chef. So when I take my slow foot, loose eye to my kitchen and I'm going to drop these chicken drumsticks in the air fryer. Do that make me a celebrity chef? I'm cooking for myself and I am a celebrity. Aaliyah TV, post the definition of a celebrity. Pearl Jackson, can you post the definition of a celebrity? Little Maria, why you laughing? Can you post the definition of a celebrity so I can read it to the chat? And the people that are listening to me on the IG and my, ooh, this attractive person from Tubi was watching me, too. I don't know if Ke uh, Ke Keefe um, is still listening to me. He from um, Chase. He's from um, Tubi, Single Man Problems. I don't know if he's still listening. I interviewed that brother. Attractive. He need to be on the show because he know how to act. He know how to act in front of the camera to bring drama. Anyway, for Marquise, I love you want to have goal to be a restaurant owner, but let's have some reality. Being a restaurant owner is a lot of work. It's not about cooking. That's a piece of it. You got to know how to market. You got to know how to get the property. You got to know how to run a business. You got to know how to do your taxes. You got to know how to do payroll. You got to know how to run a successful business. People just think, oh, I just want to have a restaurant. I'm going to have gourmet soul food and tortillas on the side. That's a piece of it. It's a lot trying to run a restaurant. That ain't no, you might as well just stay in your kitchen. That's expensive. And 75% of restaurants fail within the first year. And the black, that's even worse for black restaurant owners. Why do you think I support what's clucking in Plano so much? Because I know how hard they have to work to have a successful business, especially in Plano, Texas. And they in that restaurant every single day. Angie and her husband, the owners of What's Clucking, they in there every day, sun up to sun down. Because as a black owned business, you got to work twice as hard to get half of the capital as your white counterparts because you don't get half the loan, half of the finances compared to white folks white restaurant owners and black people hold black folks to a standard that they don't hold mcdonald's up to burger king up to and, and one time your chicken come cold you done so i don't that's why i don't support black restaurant but you can get cold chicken nuggets from mcdonald's 
cold fries from McDonald's, the ice cream machine don't work, they ain't got no ice in the cup, and you still gonna go there with your eight kids. Can I get me eight Happy Meals? We ran out. Okay, no problem. You're right. You got to be right. I just give me what you have, and I'm gonna come back and bring my black dog. Let a black restaurant have some soggy chicken. You're going to be on IG leaving them zero stars. This is why I don't support black unrest. They treat us so bad. Just quit. Let them white folks at Burger King mess up your Whopper. You still going to go back there and go get you another Whopper and some more fries and a large Sprite. Moving right along back to the Chase of Dallas. Now, I'm not trying to disrupt your dreams, Marquise, because it, it can be possible. Call me on the side. And let me talk to you. Let me speak life to you. We could talk privately on the phone. And I like to meet you because you're an iconic force because you have a dream. And I'm not here to disrupt your dream. I'm just giving you the reality of what you have to do to make sure your dream come to life. That's it. And I'm and I'm not going to say, you know, I am a comedian. So your broccoli probably wasn't salty. It probably was good. Your green beans probably was probably were good food. So I'm going to have to taste it. I'm going to book you to cook me a meal. I want you to meal prep me a meal. We're going to talk offline. This is serious because I actually support people. I don't just talk. You better go ask K-Star. I, I support people music, financially. If you're an artist, I buy a t-shirt. I do all that. So done with that scene, Jay Stewart, Shay, Ted Lee. I'm going to talk about this, and I'm about to close on this review. But this is the part that got me. Telly said, well, Marquise is going to cook for my book launch, my soft book launch. I said, book? But what's the name of the book? It's the autobiography of my life. The Tales of a Middle Age Bottom. If that ain't the name of the book, take it off Amazon. Cause it ain't gonna, ain't nobody gonna buy it. You put a book out, 127 pages, talking about an autobiography of your life. What life? You're nothing a public figure for people to go rush to read your book. Then I'm looking at the prices. Twenty dollars for a brochure. You want me to pay $20 for a brochure? By the time you get done with the introduction, that's the ending of the book? For $20. The iconic Shirley Chisholm autobiography. That ain't 20 And that's a big book. You got a menu for $20? And you try to finesse and catfish me to buy? So they show this book like this is this is a struggle. He talking in the room and it's so empty you can hear the echoes. Only about five people in there. And see, this is the thing with our Dario and Markel. Y'all don't want to work with Wiley. Look at that drivers. You got Ted Lee working talking in an empty room, talking about a pamphlet, a menu. This is my soft lunch, buy the book with the QR code. The only thing that look good, Marquise, yeah, give him tens across the board, he look good. And the food that he cooked, it look good. But that just don't count, I need to taste it. Marquise, can I taste it? I gotta see how it tastes. I got to see how it tastes in my mouth in order to say that your food tastes good. But do it look good? Yes. I've seen plenty meat that look good, but then when I put it in my mouth, it was dry. It, it did not have that good vibration, that good texture. It wasn't tender. It was dry. Like Sherelle's World Wig. So, 
Then Nicole from Chasing LA, they got canceled because they could they didn't have the finances to bring it back. Oh god. Oops. They didn't have the finance to bring back Chase in LA because the producer of the show was struggling. They didn't have the money. <laughs> Baby, they had the money to bring it back. That's the one that Armand Wiggins' best friend is on that they really wanted Armand Wiggins, but they couldn't afford it because he said he ain't work for free. So they couldn't afford to bring the show back because the producer, he really can't make ends meet. That's why he couldn't go to Oliver Twist uh, Cruise because he didn't have his money. Anyway, nothing to get some times is hard. It's expensive in LA. They'll just come on back to Atlanta. So they didn't bring it back. So Nicole, she get on the flight, she come, and she bring the mask. She told Telly, um, you Bessie, you know what you're doing. This is another trans girl. You know what you're doing. Why would you have a party on the same night as George? Because I'm just being honest. I only came here for George, for George party. Shade, but I love it. Then she was like, didn't um, Astro sleep with your man? Oh, let's not get it today. It's all about me. I love Nicole. Only for this instance. It took a trans woman with a wig to fly in from Spirit Airlines to come to Dallas to wake it up. It took an outsider to bring drama. But the cast is so weak, they couldn't match Nicole energy. They green screens was dry. Quincy tried. So, I've never seen a country dry bumpkin. I've never seen it. Usually country folks ignorant, but they got personality. He country with no personality. So, Nicole throwing all the shade. She's doing well. But when they get to the green screens, None of them could do it. The producer should have just let Nicole do her green screens. And they should have just said, you know what, sus? Since you do hair and you sell wigs or whatever, can you just stay in Dallas for a couple more weeks and we just add you to the cast? Y'all need Nicole. Quincy don't got it. Ted Lee, whoever focused, Maybe Ted Lee gave Markel some of that good good and some of that good old Brazilian black spray on his chin. There is no way you trying to make Ted Lee the star of the show. He ain't got it. The stars of the show is gone. That was King Dior and Trey Howard. They trying to have Astro to replace the youth they're trying to replace Trey Howard. Trey Howard was attractive. His teeth was way better look. He had better dental care than Astro. No offense. Astro grew up in the hood. Mama wasn't, was, was, they was living in hotels and motels. So he couldn't really focus on dental care. They had to work about survival. The teeth came, it never came for Astro. But what I'm saying is that's not on the top of the list. But Trey, iconic, attractive, messy. He brings the energy. With that being said, he left Dallas respectfully. He left Dallas, got on the plane. He pulled the go and be a fashion designer and a public stylist. Okay. Congratulations. I'm like, Trey, how are you? Have good. You and your man. Okay. Y'all attractive. Go ahead. It went from doing red carpets. And you know what Trey Howard is doing today, him and his man? They busting in it wide open on OnlyFans. Do you know why? Because it's expensive in California. Then when you go to their OnlyFans, it ain't giving nothing but bones, 360 waves, and heavy makeup. When I subscribe to your OnlyFans respectfully, Baby, I want to see action. I want to see the cheeks, the sheets, 
and everything else in between. I don't want to see you do semi photo that don't get action. Girl, you ain't no top model. Okay. But she was better in Dallas on chasing that. It was iconic. Dior, Reese G, etc. The reason why I'm giving Reese G credit. Number one, Reese as a cast member and a producer, it worked. Clearly, it worked. Markel trying to keep the producer hat, he ain't got it. Markel was better as the antagonist against Reese G. He don't know how to produce because he want to be everybody friends. But I guess you got to do that because you ain't paying nothing, nobody. You can't pay him. I ain't bringing in no revenue. So, but still with Reese, he couldn't pay the people either. But he was so big and, and, and such an antagonist, he knew how to bring the mess. Oh, EA said, uh, uh, I can't, well, I don't care if you can't follow it. That's a you problem. <laughs> EA, I'm live on YouTube. I had no need for you to say next topic, please. You can't, but that's a you problem. <laughs> Last time I checked, this ain't the EA show. This is the Wiley show. Okay. If you don't know who them people are, EA, that's a you problem again. You keep listening. You'll know. <laughs> and send him an email saying you put Wiley on there. Maybe we'll know who he is. So we up there listening to the show. And I said, um, uh, we're talking about a YouTube show and that I watch. And so, and I'm a fan. But I got to criticize these people because it was boring and dry. The editing, Adario, good job. Editing, I, ha I don't have a problem with the camera like the quality and editing. But baby, it's something major else that y'all forgot. It's the quality, the editing, production, and the most important part too, the personality. The personality. I don't care about chasing your dreams. I know in reality, none of y'all ain't chasing real dreams. You've been chasing forever. You still working at Walmart. You're still working at Amazon. You're still working. One of y'all working at the gym because you checked me into the gym. That's it. And one of you lied to me, said you were the man of the gym, and you were nothing with the guy cleaning the toilets. So, again, it is okay to show people, hey, I work at Walmart, but eventually I'm not going to be up there Stocking all day, I'm going to be a successful rapper. But show the struggle. The problem with Chasing Dallas, y'all trying to finesse and lie to the audience like y'all got y'all life together. You don't. Show the struggle. Astro, your mama and y'all got into it. Y'all was fighting. Show that. You in a real struggle. The reason why you can't really do your music because it's expensive to go in the studio to mix and master. If you want your music to sound good, you got to pay for studio time. Show the struggle. Stop trying to pretend like you got it together and you don't. Stop it. Stop with the lies. Show your truth. Live in your truth. Most of y'all don't be in the club because you can't afford to get in the club. I saw Robert at Marty's. He can afford it because he knows somebody at the front door that he can get in for free. He, he can finesse his relationship. But anyway, I met Robert in person. Spoke to that man eye to eye. I didn't look him straight now because you know I can't look people straight now. I looked him eye to eye. I said, hey, man, I love you on the show. I spoke to him directly as a man. He said, man, Wiley, thank you, man. Showing me love. Yeah. Got to come on the show. Didn't come on the show because you got you got Markel in your ear. Now, you got a business and you need customers. We got viewers. Markel ain't got no customers. Okay. Keep listening to these queens that ain't going to help that business. And Markel is messy. That man was being messy to me. We got nominated for an award. 
I pulled up on Markel. Reese G had a problem with me too. Reese ran to the table. Or walked very fast. He didn't run to the table. You say Reese he ain't doing no running. That man ain't run in, in years. He just walked with haste. So, but I saw Markel. And I was with my friend James Cooper. He at uh, Ear Hustler Podcast. I said, brother, let me talk to you. You said X, Y, and Z. And what you said was a lie. Yeah, I understand. You you thought, see, people, they shock when they see you in per. I came to them directly. Yeah, I understand. Okay, all right. We cool. We cool. But don't play with me. I pull up. I went to them directly. Don't play with me. You thought I wasn't going to show up. I hit the street with a camera, lights, everything. Now, Reese did say he was going to throw them hands when he see me. That didn't happen. Me and that camera stand was ready. <laughs> Baby, that heavy camera stand that I had, we was ready. I told James, if they try, <laughs> this the number to my legal shield attorney. This the number to my mama. You get you tell them to call me and tell her that how to bail me out. Cause I can guarantee you it's gonna be. Tables, ladders, and chairs matching for this place. Just know that. And I can guarantee you, Mr. James Cooper, I told him, the news going to be here. And best believe, I got history of the news showing up when I show up. Anyway, so we talked to Markel, and boom, we resolved it. But Markel have an issue because I criticized him and that I get more publicity about the show and I, I'm not on the show. I know how to insert myself in a story. It's easy. I had one of the cast members recently in my home. Feeding them. They eating my snacks on the top of my refrigerator. I could go there, but I'm going to hold that tea later on in the season. Had to put up my laptop when we talked about this situation. And I know a lot of y'all upset uh, in the chasing reality world. But just know I have every right to give my opinion. And if you can't handle my mouth, stop trying to be a reality star, honey. Keep working at Walmart and flipping burgers. Now we got a, uh, other uh, topics that we're going to uh, dive into. And I want to say shout out to my producers that is in the building. I got to talk about Portia really quickly. Portia and Simon, this situation is giving storyline. And let me <clears throat> tell you, Portia, I, I love you. I feel like you thought you had your big one. You thought you was with Simon. You thought you was with this Nigerian billionaire. If he truly was a Nigerian billionaire, he won't date you. He's going to date somebody way, way younger in their 20s. You are not on the list. You is expired goods compared to what a billionaire want. They don't want you. They want somebody way younger that can still have plenty of babies. That's what I knew. He truly was not a Nigerian billionaire. So Simon was a scammer, illegally entered this country, got put out, and that's why he couldn't get his citizenship because he did a lot of fraudulent behavior back in the 80s and the 90s. But now, Portia pulled up to her ex-husband, well, about to be ex-husband, after she divorced, allegedly she pulled up with a, with a person with the pow pow, somebody that was armed, to, get, to gain entry into the place. And now, Simon is now saying he's going to file... Uh, he found the cease and desist and said, you all cannot film Real Housewives of Atlanta in my home because Portia don't have that big mansion. So she can't go to her Airbnb or her little place. She got to show that she's really grand because she's trying to be the new mini leaks, the face of the net of, of, of Real Housewives of, of Atlanta. So clearly this is working in Portia favor because that's going to be her storyline. She married a scammer. She slept with a married man, et cetera. Et cetera. Great storyline, great drama. But it's not going to really work if you don't have nobody with that Nene leaks herself or Nene leaks 
uh, energy to bring the stuff up. The reason why Simon and them is working together because he posted some weird stuff. She posted, it's all for a storyline. But for what is not a storyline, Simon not, cannot be a citizen because he committed crime. But my thing with Portia, why would you stop doing Dish Nation? Why would you stop doing all these gigs to follow a man that business-wise, financially, he his money don't make sense? And, and the money people don't know him at all. He's just a, a, a scammer. And when I was listening to Claudia before, while I was looking at her feet and I was looking at that show on, on Flop Soul, she literally was talking about that Simon truly is a scammer. And that she disagreed with Portia leaving and abandoning her positions to follow a scammer. So I agree with Claudia on that. But one thing I also would like to say about Portia, I'm glad that you are back on reality television because them checks, you missed them good checks. People, them checks is good. And now you have enough experience, you got enough name, now they give you multi-million dollar checks. But this show not going to work, this season not going to work if you don't get people to counter that, to challenge that. It got to be real drama. And when I was talking to, to, to my friend, to the friend of the show, Monica, all about the tea, what I was telling her, I said, we need EBT folks. She started laughing. I said, EBT people. We need people that is on government assistant, that's a wife, but they're poor, and they get some camera time, they become a star. They need to make new stars. See, Nene wasn't always Nene. She was raggedy looking, hard looking, and then she became glammed up. We need more people. It's plenty of women from the hood that I can go right now and pick up in Inglewood in Chicago, go to Atlanta. And we'll wake it up. But this whole cook it, cutter, produce, force is not sincere. This is why Zeus is taking up so much of the marketplace because that's like real loud content. But even in some instances with Zeus is getting a little diluted and forced. It's got to go back to the realness. That's what people want. They want that real type of stuff. They want that real energy. But I feel like if you can really bring that to the show, it would be iconic. But I also would need Simon got to be a part of this. You got to have a conversation with Simon. Simon got to challenge it. Simon got to be on the show. He got to be the Peter. He got to be the one that's messy and everybody business. Everybody got to come and challenge him. He need to be in the cast in order for this Porsche storyline to work. I don't just need her talk. I need Simon and all of his Nigerian gold, fake gold at that to come on the show and really bring that energy. If he can't bring that energy, then I don't need to see Simon. If, or I don't need to see Portia. I don't need all that fake. I need to see a different type of Portia. Don't give me that tired, depressed, fake tears. Are you serious that you did that fake? And then Candace's face is why she's been playing with I need to see some, I need to see some energy. I need to see if Simon, you're going to be the new Peter. One thing about Peter, he was a scammer like you. He didn't like to pay his debts like you, like you owe this private jet company. You know, you owe them like Peter. So you got to bring that Peter energy. Your teeth is white like Peter. You ain't got the beard like Peter. You got a piece of a beard. But you got to bring that mess like Peter. And then you bring that mess. And then the real Peter, he going to go on Michelle ATL and Brown, my friend and a friend of the show. He going to be talking and he going to be saying, yeah, people say he's he, he's the new me. I don't think he's the new me. That's Simon. I'm Peter. There's nobody like me. They keep saying I'm a scammer. Yeah. So I would love to see it. I think it would be entertaining. I think it would be great. I think it would be shocking to, to, to the franchise because let's be clear. Y'all are struggling between the Real Housewives of Potomac and between the Real Housewives of Atlanta is not really hidden. So that's what I want to say about that. Okay, so I would give them a chance, but I will drag if they be boring. I'm being serious. Jesse Smollett is going to the Illinois, the Illinois Supreme Court is going to hear Jesse Smollett case because he was convicted um, for lying, saying that MAGA sprayed him with bleach <laughs> and, and tied 
a, a rope around his neck. And clearly none of that happened. And two Nigerian brothers, good looking bottoms, they helped, they were hired to be the, the MAGA people. So the great Chicago Police Department, they tracked down the two African brothers. They stood out because they was in a white neighborhood. They went to the store, <laughs> hardware store, got the product, the bleach and the rope. And they were arrested. They were they was questioned when they came back from Nigeria. And all came out. They turned against Justice Millett. And Justice Millett uh, was arrested. And uh, Cook County State's attorney, uh, Kim Fox, uh, they charged Justice Millett. Then a couple of days later, after she got her money, allegedly from the Justice Millett family, got pressure because that family is very connected politically. Um, they connected to Jesse Jackson. They connected to the NAACP. They connected to the Urban League. She got a call. She got some pressure. She got pressure from the Chicago Democratic Party, from the Illinois De Democratic Party, from the DCCC, et cetera. So she decided to make an announcement that they're going to drop all the charges. They're going to do community service, and he's going to pay restitution. She's going to pay some debt. And we're going to drop the charges. Well, the white people didn't like that because he kept saying MAGA did it. They challenged it. So some, some white woman... Went to court, filed a motion to tell the court that you all need a special prosecutor. This is unjust. This is not right. This is, a, a you know, Kim Kim Fox supposed to uh, recuse herself. How she counted this case. She, she, text, she texted the sister, the mama, of just like texting the people over in the Justice Millette camp. So the judge heard the case. And he ordered a special prosecutor. So the special prosecutor came. He decided we're going to file charges. It went to trial. Just met loss. If I delete myself, I did not do it. He started screaming like he was black. <laughs> that man watched too many 12 Years a Slave. He watched too many Brother Malcolm X movies. He thought he was Denzel. Like, he just watched too much of Roots. And now he became conscious. Okay. Got arrested. And then his lawyers filed an appeal. And the appellate court, they, the Illinois appellate court, like the, the appeals, they they said, hey, uh, he, we're going to release him. He's going to be released uh, because the appeal may be longer than his sentence. And they only sent him maybe for like six months, three, four, five, six months. And he he would have been out by now, way out by now. But now the Illinois Supreme Court is going to hear the case. And his argument is that the prosecutor already gave me an agreement, said there will be no charges. They're going to drop the charges. And how can a new prosecutor come in and try to wipe out what a previous prosecutor does? That doesn't make sense. This case reminded me of, of the Bill Cosby case. Uh, when he appealed it all the way up to the um, the Supreme Court, um, the, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, state Supreme Court. It's the highest court in the state of Pennsylvania. And his argument was, I had an original agreement with the prosecutor that they would not file charges. And I can testify in, um, you know, uh, I can testify in a civil proceeding, and but they will not charge me criminally. But... The old prosecutor was deal, but a new prosecutor got elected, and they ran on making sure that Bill Cosby is convicted. So they went, he went to trial, and Bill lost, and he went to prison. Then his lawyer challenged it, and he won the appeal. They released him, and it was very hard. It shocked a lot of people, but the 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 courts their 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 um, ruling was, you know, the prosecutor already gave uh, uh, already gave Bill Cosby. A deal, original prosecutor. You can't give this man a deal. Then a new prosecutor can take. What sense does that make for people to cooperate with prosecutor with deals when y'all don't honor the deal? So that was unconstitutional. I guess what they were saying. So that reminded me of this Justice Millett. It has a similarity argument, even though he wasn't accused of what Bill Cosby was accused of. Um, but that's a similar argument, and I think that's why the Illinois Supreme Court said, "Hey, we're going to hear the case." And not only that, Jesse Millett is a high-profile entity 
and you know they don't want to seem like they're being biased or against or whatever but this is going to be uh, i'm going to watch it and whenever they come with their ruling i would definitely bring it to the wally show do i believe they're going to side with jesse absolutely they're going to side with jesse because the prosecutor originally said we're dropping all charges you're going to do this serve this community service and what she was doing that you can't come in oh i disagree with that we're gonna do it baby if they allow that that's crazy if a prosecutor already gave a deal, whether you agree with it or not, that's the prosecutor. They got discretion to do that. And then if you disagree, then a new prosecutor gets, no, that's dangerous. That's, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. That's going to be harmful, especially to black and brown people to get deals. But then a new prosecutor say, I don't agree with the deal. I'm going to throw away with that. I'm going to really take you to trial. No, I don't like that. That's going to be like the wild, wild west. And I think that is not right, in my humble opinion. Now, do I agree with Jesse Lyon? No, but do I think he need to serve jail time for it? No, I think community service paying the city of Chicago back for the uh, the taxpayers uh, back for paying for all that overtime, helicopters, um, all of that. I think he should do that in which he willing to do it. Uh, but him going to jail for those six months and we're paying for his three meals a day, medical care his laundry, his food, that doesn't make sense because nobody was harmed in this. Nobody was hurt in this. Nobody was injured. He just lied. And so, and so um, community service and probation for two years, that's what I think is best. And that's what I think he should do. Now, uh, I also would like to say he the reason why Empire went off the air because Empire was losing his interest, but then when he did that, that was in Empire, and it destroyed the other show that came out that Lee Daniels produced, and I love that show, because that's where we saw um, so many artists, uh, so many trans women, so many great people on that show, uh, where Brandy was on there, Queen Latifah, Patti LaBelle, I would love to see that show come back on the air, but that show was canceled as well, and what was the name of the show? Yeah. Um, that show was canceled as well as Empire, but Lee Daniels said he was going to bring that show back. But you know, when you lie, that's that's the results that you get. Glad you broke that down, Wally. No problem. Yeah, Star, I love that show. Woo! When Brandy was playing, mm, I love it. And uh, also, Diddy's son, uh, adopted son, Al son, was uh, played in there too. Okay, this is before the freak off and the swallow up allegations. Now. Let's talk about Roland Martin. And I love Roland Martin because he was talking about how people were saying that Diddy sold his shares of Revolt and um, that it's a new owner. Well, Roland came out on his Instagram and he quoted a page six article. And he said, page six, this is a lie. Diddy did not sell or sold his shares to another new owner. He's still the owner. And he was calling out Black Enterprise, et cetera. So I was being messy. I tagged Monica from All About the Tea. I said, All About the Tea, do you know somebody with page six? What is your thoughts? I tagged page six. Word on the curb that y'all giving out fake news, according to Roland Martin. Can I get a comment? Nobody respond. And then something else Roland said on the show, and I and I listened to the broadcast this morning. I mean, before the show, um, he was he did a segment and he was talking about how black folks is 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 rewriting what TMZ does. They're not calling the source. And I said, Roland, you are so right. They do it on YouTube. Well, the neighborhood talk and TMZ and all of that goes right back to TMZ. And, and most some of the time, TMZ get the information wrong because a lot of black journalists are lazy. Some of them are lazy. They are lazy. They don't want to pick up the phone. They just watch for TMZ. This is what they do in the newsroom today or in their living room. They wait to TMZ, release the story. Then they go to type it, do a rewrite what TMZ said. Even, you know, like the Jasmine brand, some of them, all they do is rewrite. And B. Scott is the leader of it. 
When you go to her website, T is a copy and paste from TMZ. <laughs> Baby, if I want to do that, I read TMZ. She don't even reach out to the source and get them herself. They say, well, according to the source of T, that's not your source. And what Roland's saying is when you stamp your name on it, your brand on it, that's not your source. Pick up the phone and call. So he was giving examples of how one of his panelists, the attorney there, um, they, it was a rumor that he was held in contempt. And so I think Roland called, I guess he was giving an example, and, and, and somebody said, no, the judge said, if I keep going on, I will be held in contempt, but I'm not in contempt. So what Roland was saying is, I called you. There was another person on there, and I love him. I can't think of his name, but he works for the Rainbow Push Coalition with Jesse Jackson. And he want to run for office. And then somebody leaked the story before he was able to say it. And it was getting things wrong. Roland called him first. And Roland said, listen, I talked to you first before I came to conclude, before I dragged the people. Because I'm going to get the information. That's what journalists do. They go and call. And he said, this is journalist, uh, journalism one-on-one. -on -one. And then one of the panelists said, but no, you're talking about excellent. He said, no, this is journalism one-on-one. -on -one. We ain't in journalism 400. Journal journalism one-on-one -on -one is calling and getting the information, getting the facts, calling people. If you say, well, Diddy said he sold revoked to whoever. And and the reason why this story sounds fishy, but the buyer is, is anonymous. Okay. That don't make sense. Don't nobody know who this buyer is. There ain't nobody posting a name. You got all them sources, but don't nobody know the name of the person. Roland came out and said, I got five, I got four sources. Four. And they all said there are negotiations, but nothing have been signed. There's only one man that like one, one man. Uh, 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 it's only one. It's not multiple owners. One. And nothing had been finalized. And Roland said, I knew about this for a month. The problem is with people when they criticize Roland, they look at Roland Martin being on YouTube. Roland Martin is a journalist. Okay. A basic Google search will show you Roland Martin biography. The Chicago Defender. He worked with so many black news outlets. And Roland, I love Roland because he, he as a journalist, he gives you a beginning, middle, and end. He, he, he paints the full picture. He goes to show you about sources. So when he was working with CNN during the Obama um, election, they said, where's Obama at? Where you going to be at? He, going, he, he had dinner. Oh, where's he going gonna to be here? And he said, well, Roland, where do you get your information? For the person that is sitting next to him. Roland got sources. Roland is 50 some odd years old, been, been doing this since he was in high school. The man got sources. The problem is, is that black folks don't respect what Roland is saying because he's on YouTube. He's not on CNN. He's not TMZ because just like Roland Martin have said, we give white validation the, the, the standard. And one of the panelists said, why do black folks rewrite what white folks say and then they speak in slave dialect on their black folks? I'm like, yikes. Why do we have to write with the white journalists say, and, and speak in slave dialect? I'm like, oh, oh, oh. But that's what it is. We automatically believe that what TMZ say is just truthful and what Roland said is a lie. Because people discredit black excellence. They, they, they don't understand that Roland is a journalist, been a journalist as long as I've been breathing. He been working. I think when he got his first job, I think I wasn't even born. I think he was working before 1990. So this is how far back he goes. So he know what he's talking about. I've been a follower of him since I was in my 20s. I'm 33 now. I used to call into Roland show, and Roland didn't play. Roland was a host on WVON, and I used to love Roland. And WVON, that's a, a talk radio station in Chicago, baby. You listen to that. I always dream to have a radio, uh, 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 to be on that show, to have my own show, WVON. I loved it. And it's one of the radio show who I can't think of his name. He, was, he lived right across the street from our church, from my, my uncle's church. And he had that deep voice. He been he been on there the longest. Man, 
I love them. I never dreamed to be on Fox Soul. I dreamed to be on WBON. <laughs> if I ever had a dream. So Roller would be on there. He just iconic uh, iconic um, host. And I'll still listen to the show out there on iHeart because I'm able to listen to it since I don't have, you know, I listen to it at home and I can listen to the show. I just love to hear their input about local politics and national politics. So, but Roland was talking about his sources, about how it was a, a case where a police officer, you know, stopped uh, uh, this black professor from Harvard that... Um, that does, you know, do the DNA. He's very well respected. And he, and the police officer, once he found a person that this was his home, um, he still was being crazy. And then uh, President Obama said um, the officer acted stupidly or something like that. And 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 Roland was talking about uh, uh, a lot of people wanted President Obama to, to, to recant that statement. And Roland said in the White House, they have two meetings. They have a meeting at 7 a.m. and they have a meeting at 8 a.m. The 7 a.m. meeting is the real meeting. And in the meeting, one of his black advisors said, I tried to get a cab and I couldn't get a cab. Do not recant. Do not walk back that statement. And Obama, President Obama said in the room, he's not going to walk back the statement. One, somebody in the room told Roland. <laughs> and he said, I'm not going to tell you who that advisor was. Because you protect, that's another thing that you learn in journalism school. You protect your source. Because if you start spilling the tea of your sources, people won't tell you no tea. So Roland did really good with that. Because to this day, nobody's showing you who this mysterious owner is. And Roland said this. He said, once it become finalized, I will be the first one to tell you because I got four sources that know what they're talking about. I take Roland word because he never proved me. He never like I've never seen him to be un, uh, not news like trustworthy as a outlet. I trust him to deliver the facts. I may disagree of his delivery, but baby, once you get through all the yelling and interrupting his gas and telling the control room, get to my iPad, iPad, please. The other slide. The man got facts. And once you a boss, you can talk to your staff like that. Get to the other slide. Get to the other slide. No, 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 not that way. Not that way. <laughs> Rolling me going off on his control room. <laughs> but when you on the budget, uh oh, I'm about to say something controversial. You can't hire the 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 best technical producers. You got to get. You got to get the what you can afford <laughs> in order to get them type of people that is trained to transition and and post that know how Roland think and know how to and, and don't miss a beat. You got to have top dollar. You got to have somebody that's trained in television production that know how to run a show. Them people in that control room know they done a decent job, but they are not at Roland's level to match. He, they're not as, at his level. They don't, they still, out of all the years, don't know how Roland operates. You know Roland is gonna go off, off, off script. You know Roland gonna go on his iPad. You know he's gonna pull. You got to be in tune, Roland. Maybe they not really listening. See, you got to be in tune and kind of predict what he's gonna do. If you know he's gonna be talking about a story of of, of 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 about talking about misinformation. You know he's going to be talking about how he operate as a journalist. So you got to make sure and get all your, you know, it just, but when you ain't paying people what they think they work, they're going to slack off. That's what's going on. And me, honestly, Roland, a lot of the people in that control room need to be fired. They need a pink slip. Because this is what I start, this is my constructive criticism. This is why I start stop kind of watching because when y'all was doing the State of the Union address, baby, the mics weren't connected. I had to send a tweet to Roland, said the mics ain't connected. We can't hear the panel, the panelists. 
Whoever had that malfunction on one of the highest night, which was the State of the Union, they need to be fired. That ain't the first time that they have had people connected with microphones that wasn't working. What are y'all doing in pre-production meeting? What are y'all doing before y'all go live? Y'all not testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Then those incompetent employees in that control room, you can hear them testing during the commercial break. We shouldn't hear that. But they're not trained. And yes, Roland, what are you doing? But baby, Roland, you need to train your staff. Y'all need to do mock broadcast before y'all go live because there are so many mistakes with this y'all been on the air for too long to be having all of them mistakes a lot of them people in that control room that's effing up fire them immediately they ain't ready mics ain't connected i remember rolling did interviews and couldn't really put it out because the person forgot to sync the audio with the mic to turn on the sound and it was all a waste. If they was on CNN, they will be fired. You will be putting on your LinkedIn a former production assistant camera operator at CNN. You're going to get your walk-in papers. So that's my only critique. Other than that, the show is really good because black people need factual information just like one of the panelists said how she, what she fear is that not just misinformation but information that you know is false but you're putting out anyway to uh control a public to sway black people and she said you're going to see more of that coming up in november just fake information like fake news, but designed to confuse black people to vote, not to vote, not to vote for Biden. And it's going to be, mess and then they're going to use black outlets because a lot of these black outlets, they watching conservative outlets reporting what they say and don't even fact. I'm not even a journalist. And I know half the stuff they put in there is bull crap. Just like they said, President Biden is giving out crack pipes. And black outlets was reporting on that. Tamika Mallory was reposting that. That was a lie. He wasn't giving out no crack pipes. But again, black media is so, some parts of it and their so-called reporters are lazy. You're doing a rewrite. Baby reporters get the information like calling the White House, calling the press secretary, president, Biden press secretary calling him, hey, what da, 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 da. I learned that when it was a story that came out in City Hall, some story I believe came out in the Daily Mail that Chicago is giving um um they said Chicago, the city of Chicago is giving migrants sixty eight hundred dollars. And let me see if I can track down this email. Sorry, Brother Roland. I ain't got no pr production, so I got to do everything myself. You more advanced than me, brother. You said your company worth $4 million. <laughs> we, ain't even got a, we don't even have 100000 But nevertheless, we're going to get this information out, if y'all don't mind. So, I'm trying to find it. So, back on October 19th, 2023, I emailed the press office of the uh, city of Chicago, City Hall. And this email that I sent, there is an article talking about Chicago is giving $9,000 to migrants to cover their rent and help furnish their apartment. As staggering report reveal, a single medical firm ranked in 7.2 million, um, sheltering the city asylum seekers for just one month. I gave him the link to the article. 
I want to know, is the city of Chicago giving $9,000 to migrants to cover their rent? I hope to hear from you soon, Marquise Wiley, okay? This is what the press office said, no. After that one email, I said, thank you. They removed me from the email list. From that one email, I no longer was receiving emails from the public schedule of Mayor Brandon Johnson. The last update, the last uh, public schedule that I received from Brandon Johnson was on September the 14th, 2023. I never received another one. Why? It's because this black outlet is asking a question. And I tagged the mayor of Chicago. I said, I personally believe you do not respect Black-owned media. Why are you running from Black-owned media? Why don't I have my press credentials? Because I want to be in the room whenever you do a press conference. Because nobody in that press room is going to ask you a question for Black people. They're going to ask for their people. I'm asking for Black people. You look just like me, Mayor Johnson, Brandon Johnson. The mayor, you said for the soul of Chicago, I want to talk about all these souls that are being lost in Chicago and what are you doing to stop it? But you don't want me in the room. So, but again, is it going to stop me from talking about the city of Chicago? No, I'm going to continue to talk about it, continue to tag. I interview the Ottoman, low pass, et cetera. But my point is I asked the question. I didn't assume that they were doing it. Let me go directly to the city of Chicago, to City Hall. They told me no. So my point, oh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, production. So my point is, if something come up, ask the sort pick up the phone I, I pick up the phone they say leave an email when you call the city of chicago press office they say leave an email they say leave an email so i left an email i did everything they said do i send the email then when i call them about update about my press you know credentials to be there they say did you send the email i sent multiple emails i have all the records but i get it you don't want somebody like me walking the halls of city hall asking these people, the black ones, the white ones, anybody questions about what are you doing for the black people in Chicago? I go to the black. Uh, did it stop me from talking to the Alderman people? No, I have reached out to some. But once they saw the questions that I'm asking, crickets, because I'm not going to play with you. This is not NBC. This ain't CBS. This is not Fox News. This is not Newsmax. This is the Wiley Show. My name, my main purpose is for the agenda of black people what are you doing for the black Chicagoans? Not for nobody else. That is my main focus, is black people. I go, I ask them very direct questions. Ottoman Lopez, I ask them some questions about the migrants. Directly, because you are Ottoman. I'm asking you some questions. And he was so shocked that who is this black man with this cell phone in my face asking serious questions. Not only that, Ask questions to the black activists after they did all this yelling about what they want, blah, 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 blah. Okay. What is the timeline? What is the action plan? What do you want the people to do to get things done? You're talking about the problems. What is the solution? You give me a solution? Okay. What's the, are you going to put a timeline on it? 30 days, 60 days, 120 days. What do you want the people to do? Because we all can sit around and just talk. Okay, now we got to talk about action other than marching, other than yelling, other than screaming. And to this day, there is no follow-up of that meeting, of that press conference that we did months ago. It was just a lot of loud talking. Now back to Roland. So Roland had every right to criticize black media because the man, black media gave him his start. Black media, uh, most all, if not all is that other than CNN was black media. He made most of his money with black owned media. 
He told the Chicago Defender that y'all need to focus more so on podcasts online. They told him no. And where's the Chicago Defender at? <laughs> They're not as powerful as they were because they didn't know how to change with the times. Roland was so forward thinking that Chicago Defender, those old people that been there for years, couldn't see the vision. And that's why the Chicago Defender is nowhere near it was 20, 30, especially 40 some odd, 50 some odd years ago. So when he talk about the power of black owned media, there is issues with black owned media. We don't get to advertise the dollars like our white counterparts. We don't get funding from the federal government. The federal government spends billion in advertising. We rarely get money. When Roland uh, got a phone call from a representative from the con a Congressional Black Caucus, and they told Roland Martin, Roland said it on the show, I, I want to know, I would love, why ain't black media out there asking us questions? And Roland said, we can't hire a reporter uh, paying them $150,000, $250,000 to cover uh, Capitol Hill. We can't afford that. We don't have the coins for that. To be out there asking questions. we The, 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 the business have been so... We as black media have been pushed out financially by the ad dollars because that's how you make money through ads. We can't hardly cover that. So we can't be that. Costs money. Hold, you got to pay for the staff to get an apartment. You got to pay for dental care. They full time benefits. You got, you ain't going to be able to do that. It's expensive. So until the Congressional Black Caucus get into the Biden, Biden administration and be like, hey, you all need to do more investing in Black-owned media. This political campaign is going on. Billions are going to be spent. How much they're going to spend with Black-owned media? I can guarantee you it won't be $1 billion. If they give $750 million to Black-owned, let's just be, let's be practical, $150 million to Black-owned media, you will have more thriving Black-owned media outlets. They, you know what the Democratic Party give to Black-owned media as, as well with the Republican Party? Scraps, crumbs, a piece of a crumb, then all of the Black-owned media outlets have to fight for that piece of crumb that they give you at the last minute. So again, Black-owned media outlets, we have a duty to be to give the people facts, especially when you're talking about doing political, any type of news, we owe that to the people. But the problem is a lot of black owned media outlets, they're into the shock value. They into the clickbait and they ain't stunned with Roland talk about because after he got through talking, more the shade room post was quoting TMZ. They put TMZ as media God and they should be quoting Roland. But did the shade room quote Roland? Nope. Did the Jasper brand quote Roland? Nope. Did Kyle from the neighborhood talk? Repost Roland? Nope. But if Roland was out there dancing with Hillary Clinton eating chicken, they would repost that. We uh uh <laughs> they repost that him and <laughs> Dr. Umar get into it, they'll repost that. But what he's talking about, they ain't gonna repost that. OK, so that's like my, my whole point on that segment. Let's move on. <laughs> Woo child. Oh, OK, we're going to get to our last topic here. Let's talk. Let's get into Diddy. Now, Diddy, I love Diddy uh, music. Uh, personally, as a man, I think Diddy is disgusting uh, for what if the rumors are true. But I also feel that uh, 50 Cent is being brought up because Diddy, baby mama, um, and not Diddy Baby Mama, 50 Cent Baby Mom, um, Baby Baby Mother, um, was one of the workers uh, for Diddy. She took her clothes off and she was getting in with people. She was a worker and her sole job was um, spreading that yoni like a butterfly. So 50 Cent announced that he won full custody of their son they share together because, in his words, he do not want his son around Diddy nor the mother because... They are doing, you know, giving people swallowing up in their drinks, giving them all type of pills and humping people against their will, doing pink cocoa, et cetera. 
Uh, that is what 50 said. Um, the reason why he he been trolling Diddy forever, all on Instagram, especially he's been making about multiple posts a day criticizing Diddy. But I will also say about Diddy um, and 50 Cent, but 50 Cent also had domestic, you know, V, domestic V charges against him where he was meet up, uh, you know, hit a woman because the washer and dryer allegedly, according to gossip uh, in the city. Um, but th 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 this situation with Diddy is very quietly disturbing, but I do see black folks, particularly these celebrities are picking sides. And a lot of these black men are picking Diddy's side because a lot of them is Diddy. They do this stuff all the time. to try to protect the status quo. There's time for a major shift. And anybody in Hollywood that is violating a woman's trust or violating a man's trust, violating their goods and um, forcing themselves on them should be removed from the position that they're in. And the reason why I put it in the title, because, again, um, TMZ and um, the Shade Room, the Neighborhood Talk, they're saying that a federal agent is saying that. Diddy, the reason why they uh, raided his homes is because one of the victims was giving uh, collaborated evidence of, the, of what Diddy were doing, of what he was, how he was trafficking, et cetera. And that's why they were able to get the warrant. And that federal officer was quoted as saying, we did not get his name out of a hat. These victims came to us. And he said, when uh, this federal agent, uh, they're saying when Cassie filed her lawsuit, they literally literally got on Diddy's radar and they said Diddy is the reason with Cassie that's the reason why we are investigating him immediately um uh because of what he did to Cassie um uh, so that's why uh they are investigating um Diddy because of the victims now um I do want to say shout out to Megan Cunef because she posts this um story uh on her um twitter account that um they are now going after the man that is accusing diddy of all these allegations the one that got the lawyer they're accusing him or sitting there accusing these people uh and they're saying this is fraudulent these are lies they're putting in the media just to get traction it's not true uh there uh this is a quote from um uh, one uh from james versus uh um combs case number 24-1457 they they wrote a letter um um to the judge and they're pretty much asking perhaps he believed that he can make out outrageously false allegation and a, and a pleading never served them. Let them marinate in the press for a month and then completely aban aban abandon them. File equally false and legally baseless claims. That's a new filing of Jones versus uh, um, Combs, a.k.a. Diddy. So the lawyer is pretty much telling the judge, like, this man is just making up stuff just for the press um, and everything. So they put that out. And so I reposted that on my members only, and I am sharing it with you all today. And I'm letting you know, I got it from, um, Megan Cuna, Megan, AK Megan, the reporter. And also we had her on our show, I think once or twice on our show. Um, and she had been on the forefront of covering, um, uh, black entertainers and why she was boosted up as being Megan, a reporter. Not only because, you know, she is a, a journalist, been a journalist for years, but black outlets, we are in love with white reporters. We love them. Like, they love them. Like, the shade, they boost white people up. They did not boost up Milagro Graham. They did not boost up um, uh, my former um, my former um, uh, favorite celebrity, Armand Wiggins. They didn't boost them up. They boost up the white report. They didn't boost up uh, the amazing, one of my amazing colleagues, I love her, uh, Nick at Night out of California. They didn't boost her up at all. They boost up Megan. And then white outlets, they gave her Megan a report. And then black folks, Megan a report and Megan a report. And then other black, they boost this white woman up. And, you know, of course, Tori Lane started calling her googly eyes. But she is reporting on Diddy because she had found out due to the Tory Lane trial, that, oh, black folks, these black stories is more, give me more traction than 
LA City Hall drama. This is more powerful. I get the most traction. I mean, she just celebrated getting 75,000 followers on TikTok. But the thing with Diddy, now Diddy have to fight with the lawyers and 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 challenge this in court to try to get this case thrown out because he feels that, that this is a smear campaign with Mr. Jones. That's how he feel. But it may not work because the feds are already rated. But that doesn't mean that charge is going to come. We shall see. I am only giving my opinion because I'm not a journalist. I am a celebrity gossip commentator. And I believe there will be some criminal charges against Diddy. And I do believe he will be convicted. If they charge him in the grand jury, and if he get indicted, um, he's going down. Because the success rate of the feds are about 90 some odd percent. So I believe he's going to go down immediately. And do he need to go down? Yes. Are you kidding me? The man humped victims against their will, according to the complaints, according to what Mr. Jones is alleging, according to what Cassie is alleging. He was physically... I turn to her. And um, I believe he need to go down. And so according to some of the stuff they say in the sons, some of the sons were a part of this. So it's very nasty. It's very, very nasty. It's very, very nasty. And we're going to get more details of this. Um, and this is a developing story. And I do want to thank all you all for watching this broadcast and now we're going to open up the phone lines for those that do want to call in i know those that are going to watch this tomorrow for tomorrow broadcast y'all going to be eating up my phone lines uh please if you call in if i don't answer if you're watching the replay leave a voicemail and i will play your voicemail um uh, live on the air um if i don't answer because i will text you and say hey it's not live it's the premiere leave a voicemail uh, because I know most of y'all YouTube send out the notifications the next day. So a brand new audience will be watching um, because some uh, uh, times, you know, different time zones, because I was talking to somebody um, that is overseas. I think she said Dutch. Oh, where did she say she was from? She was on my Snapchat. She's somewhat overseas and it's different time zone. And um, she watched the Wally show. <laughs> And she on my Snapchat. She watched the Wiley show. I'm like, wow, you watched the Wiley show from overseas. So it's amazing uh, for her uh, watching um, the show. And she said she named other people that she watched. But she said, you know what, Wiley, I stopped watching them. I only watch you only. You just entertaining. And um, someone, you know, summed it up so well when um, people were saying that Wiley is very more entertainer than everybody else. And um, folks forgot that I was um, talking, um, been doing the show for years, um, but I'm just myself. And someone just, just really put it out there. They said Wiley is himself and um, everybody else is just fake. I'm not trying to be accepted by the status quo. I, I'm, I, the status quo do not fit me. I, I feel like it's weird. I feel like if I have to really change everything about me to sit at your table, that's a table I don't want to sit at. I want to be me. And we teach people, everybody say, be yourself. And, and, and some of my colleagues on this platform that got underpaid greed contracts, DEI, um, they abandoned YouTube. And my un these underpaid, under. underpaid underpaid Hollywood greed and I wrote a statement on my IG saying that we're not going to private videos and how you know people my public relations team um, we did um, they did put out a statement today and I want to reiterate it on on the broadcast if you all don't mind um about this whole situation, I said the Wally Show does not agree, does not agree with content creators using their subscribers to land gigs in Hollywood, only to later privatize the video to the, uh, disguise their true intentions of peace when in reality they are driven by Hollywood's unpaid greed. 
The Wiley Show is dedicated to offering live and unfiltered content for producers and the B&B squad. Um, and I'm at, um, from the Wiley Show public relations stream. So I am um, very passionate about that. Um, fucking Dineva left the underpaid greed gig because he thought that the green was greener at Fox Soul and it was nothing but a plantation. The Fox plantation. And he left. And now my former um, celebrity, um, former favorite celebrity went there and he decided to private all his videos. And we have been working very strategically um, with his viewers and counseling them and campaigning very heavy for them to bring their eyeballs to The Wiley Show. Um, and we will continue to be on the phone with some of his people that I know. Uh, we're trying to get them over here. And some of them, we had some successful phone calls with some of them. Um, and they're loving us. Um, um, so, uh, so many discourse with, with, with my name being mentioned, saying that they should come over to the Wiley show. We picking up traction on Twitter. Um, and, and I would love that. Um, right now, um, Fox, I've been struggling with viewership has been extremely boring. Um, they, they are, they are begging, um, Wiley to cover, um, their shows. I, I refuse. They're begging me right now, really, really begging me. Um, they did unblock us um, on in, in the YouTube chat, but we refuse to go in the chat. We are protesting because once you remove me from the plantation chat, there is no ye. I never seen a, a slave that you kicked off the plantation that you thought I was going to be a slave. I, I was free. I was telling people I was being free in the chat, but I, you know, but you kicked me out. But why would I go back? I refuse. And I respectfully decline. Um, I have my own show. Um, and ever since then, the show have been dry. It's a sinking ship. And only thing I hear from that ship is abort. Not jump on board like my former um, celebrity, but I'm hearing abort. Get off the ship. It's sinking. Okay. Um, my favorite, my used to be favorite celebrity, former favorite celebrity, He's dealing with an identity crisis. He don't know himself. I mean, Jason Lee is hanging out with Rihanna, Cardi, all of these people. I mean, he's not hanging with none of them. And I did drag him on my Instagram and, you know, wrote a statement on IG and I said what I said. I said, you know, Jason, uh, why didn't you invite my former celebrity? And Oh, I get it because he burned your book. <laughs> he wasn't invited to the party. He was on the outside looking in like everybody else. Um, and I, I gave my thoughts. I also would like to say this because I forgot to bring this up. But we talked about this earlier today. Me and myself, my team, we were talking about Brandon. Okay. Uh, wait, do I have a picture up? Y'all know the mayor, but I want to make sure I get the picture of the mayor. Y'all know who the mayor of, of Baltimore is. I, I like this picture, but I want y'all to see the, the mayor. Give me give me one second. I want to make sure we can bring the mayor up. Um, give me one second. I want to be able to bring um, the mayor up here. But the mayor was on MSNBC and Mayor Brandon's, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get a picture of him so you all can see him. And I believe he's 39 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Because he's he's been throwing the shots. Okay. I mean, the man ain't playing no games. Ain't playing no games. And we want to make sure we get a picture of him. Because he ain't playing no games. 
and he, uh, the conservative, uh, the literally the white wing media, they are labeling him DEI mayor. They're, they're labeling him the DEI mayor. And he was saying that, and I want to make sure I quote his statement. Give me a second. I want to quote what he said. I want to make sure we bring it up here. Um, <laughs> give me a second here. And he would you 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 all know the the uh, he was on Joy Reed, and this is the statement he said. He said, "Quote: I cannot believe I have to say this." Reed began. Brandon Scott was elected with seventy percent, and I'm going to read read this whole thing: seventy percent of the vote in 2020 in a city that is sixty one percent black. So by so by right wing logic, a diversity hire would have been a white man, correct? That's what Joe Reed opened up with. Reed did ask Scott if he wanted to address the tomfoolery of those attacking him for having the nerve to be black and also a mayor. He obliged. This is a quote from the mayor of Baltimore. He said, quote, I know and we all know and you know very well what black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think they are only straight, wealthy white men should have a say in anything, Scott said. We've been the boogeyman for them since the first day they brought us to this country. What they mean by DEI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Scott easily won Baltimore marital race four years ago with the next closest candidate, independent. Okay. Um, Scott added this uh, for his critics. D, uh, DEI, he said, we know what they want to say, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word, he told Reed. And the fact that I don't believe in their untruthful and wrong uh, uh, and I, uh, I, um, I am very proud of my heritage of who I am and where I come from, um, um, he said. So my thing is, and there's so many ads on these websites. So I get what y'all say about all the ads. It's like ads just popping up. When white wing people, and it's mostly white, but when they say DI, they say he's not qualified. He got an Afro, he's black. They just think that we're not qualified to be in a position of political power. And the issue with that is, it's just stupid because white people voted for him as well as black people. And so I, I'm not shocked. I'm, I'm just gagging at the fact that they created a new word. So I took the word. I had a DEI workout and I met a man i was stretching my dei muscles it, it it just i took the word and making a joke because it is a joke of what they're trying to say the man didn't get it because he was a diversity hire he he got it because he campaigned and the voters voted him in and he campaigned strong his message resonated with the voters he got what 70 percent of the vote so he won 70% of the vote. That does not make him just, it was a diversity thing because he was black. And the reason why they don't really respect the mayor, number one, he have a backbone, mayor, Brandon, and also he have, he goes against the media. He challenged the media. And I love the fact that he's not hiding as the mayor. I, I'm not, I, I love the fact that he goes, Mayor Scott goes 
and do press conferences. He show the public what he's doing because in order to be reelected, you got to be in people's face all the time. And I told this white man, I said, hey, I'm a DEI. And I'm going to tell you all this story. I was in the gym this morning and this white man said, don't I know you? When you at the the bar at Michelle's bar, like some some woman there, I think he said Michelle, somebody there, and I played along. Oh yeah, I was there. Oh yeah, that's the last song. Well, I haven't been there. Well, I haven't been there back since either, sir. And we just talking about being at a bar. What we never had. Now he probably was at that bar with a black man, but he jolly in his mind think that all black people look alike. So I'm in, I'm in the locker room just having a conversation. I'm literally agreeing with this man about a, a interaction we never had. But he's probably, I'm just assuming, he probably believe all black people look alike. And he's smiling, wave. I smile and wave at him too. <laughs> so... <laughs> And I proceeded to put on my clothes, put my work attire on, and go and work in my DEI, you know, be the great DEI employee. Um, and so I think also right-wing people see the future of Mayor Scott. They know he's not going to just be the mayor of the city of Baltimore. They know eventually he's going to be the he's going to go to be try to be the senator of, of Maryland. They know one day he's going to run for governor in the next four, uh, maybe the next four to eight years to be the governor of, of Maryland. Um, he may even aspire to be in a more high political office. And so what they do, they try to throw as much dirt to get him off his game so he get discouraged. The same thing with um, Vice President Harris. They said she wasn't qualified. She was DEI. She was just picked. Identity politics, et cetera. Um, they criticized Kamala Harris that she unqualified because what they're talking about, people think they talk about now. No, they're looking at towards the future that if President Biden get reelected, let's say because he's old, Lord forbid something happened, you know, due to health or whatever. Who's next in line? According to the Constitution, the vice president. Who's the vice president? Kamala Harris. I was watching Shirley Chisholm interview that she did years ago on YouTube because I fell in love with Shirley Chisholm, the first black congresswoman in Congress, the first black woman to be elected in Congress. And the first black woman to run for president. Um, she said it will be a woman being the president, but she must be the vice president first so, so people can get used to seeing it. And she said it won't be a black woman. But, but that's her mind, because in her mind, she probably couldn't see it. But she said it will be a woman. Clearly, looking like it may be, uh, we may have our first black woman president in the next four to eight years, you know? So that's why the right wing, they come against her so much because they looking towards the future. And what Kamala Harris, she don't play their games. She, she's not a Shirley Chisholm. She understand politics. She understand how to cater to the status quo. She understand not to piss off the Democratic Party, the leadership, the, the people that have some worthy for decades in, in, in Washington and all the power brokers. Um, she plays her cars right. And they 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 don't like that. They they want Kamala to be ghetto, ratchet, angry, but she's just an intelligent black woman. So And when they talk about DEI, it's just all false. They don't, they believe any black person in power got the position because they fit a status quo. 
a quota, I'm saying, a quota. Not because they went to school, they got a degree, they went to Harvard, they went to Princeton, they went to Howard, they went to Wiley College, they went to Morehouse. You got that position because you were black. You were unqualified. They just did it because they needed somebody black to get it. And that's not true. Anything that we got in a political space is because we worked hard for it. For Shirley Chisholm, to President Barack Obama, to Kamala Harris, et cetera. Before Obama, President Obama became the president, he ran for Congress. He tried to take Bobby Rush's seat, a former Black Panther. He lost that race. <laughs> Did it discourage him? He saw an opportunity to run for senator. He ran. He won. Next thing you know, we haven't been a senator that long. Ain't been like 10, 20 years. Been that long. He decided to run for president. Many people spoke against him. Many black leaders spoke against him. They, they supported Hillary Clinton during that time. And look what happened. President Obama, he won. But uh, because of the success of Reverend Jesse Jackson when he ran and the, 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 the traction that he gained, he was able to switch and change the rules in the Democratic Party. That it was no longer winner take all. If you win a certain percentage of the vote, you get a certain percentage of the delegates. That's because Reverend Jesse Jackson negotiated that deal with the DNC. And that helped President Obama to win in 2000, what? 2008. So we have always had people that inspired, that, that got into politics. When we were able to get into politics, once the door started to open, we was getting in there. It was so good in the South that white folks was just losing their mind. Like, oh, this too much. This too much gain that black people are doing. Because black people, when you put us in a space, we will dominate. <laughs> That's why they don't want you in this space. That ain't, they didn't want President Obama to be the first black. They didn't want that. Because if we get one, there's going to be another. There'll be another. There'll be another. Another, 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 another. So they try to discourage us. Don't vote. Your vote don't matter. What have your vote done for you? You don't have nothing. Stop voting. But then, okay, I ask, well, why do you keep going to the polls and vote if, if, if the vote don't matter? But this is the reason why, back to rolling, we must do our research on and give the people facts. With Brandon, the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott, they are mad because Brandon Scott is the mayor of a major city that's dealing with a crisis and he's getting the publicity. And he is a politician and he's taking advantage, showing true leadership during this crisis. And they're angry at that because you cannot erase the mayor. He's the mayor. He's the he's head in charge. You can't race the governor, Governor Moore. He's the governor of mayor, the governor of Maryland. You got a black mayor and a black governor. And when they took this picture, oh, the white wing people, they were upset. That's power. And they don't, they don't love it. And so that's why when they will try to rebuild this bridge, a lot of those people that don't like Brandon, what he represent and how he look and the people that look like him, they going to fight like hell because they don't want the governor to have a win, neither the mayor. 
they will let that bridge stay crumbled up before they will work with the mayor of Baltimore and the governor. They don't want them to have that win. That's why they so heavy on them. So against the mayor. And they so much against the mayor because he's younger and he no media. And he's using the media and he's pulling it. He know how to speak. He know that media game. When you a politician that know how to speak in front of the camera, that know how to talk to the people, you know you got a little, little swag to you from the people. That's what the people love. They don't like that. They don't like it when you go against the media. Because most of the media that acts in, they're white. Ain't wasn't a lot of black-owned media outlets out there asking questions. You didn't see Angie from the shade room. Did you hear, Did you see Jasmine out there? Nope. Did you see Kyle from Neighborhood Talk? Nope. Did you see Jason Lee Hollywood a lot? Nope. Did you see Wiley? Nope. We went out there. Most of them report out there. White. Majority. The shade room, they post with the white folks at. And then they post with MSNBC, a white-owned network. They ain't out there doing no interviews with the mayor. They could call Mayor Scott. They the shade room. Hey, Mayor, can you come and do a press conference on the shade room? Kyle could pick up the phone. He know how to talk to mayor. He know how to rock the mic. The, 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 not the microphone. He know how to rock the phone line. We all know he know how to rock the mic. No utensils. Oh, no tonsils. Oh, no teeth, I should say. Move it on. I said enough. Little black boy, you're beautiful. Little black girl, you are enough. When times get hard, always remember to put God first. Thank you all so very much. Do not forget, I cannot wait to be in Vegas on April 26th or the 28th with the iconic, beautiful force, the beautiful, 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 iconic colleague that I love, my sister, um, Couture Bay, and I will be in Vegas April 26th or the 28th, uh, Palace H Hotel Casino. I'm looking forward to seeing you all there, and we're going to be hanging out. We're going to have fun. You know, take me to the, the food places where I want to eat, I want to have fun, um, and Couture Bay and I saw first. Uh, hopefully of many um, events that we're going to do together. And I'm looking forward to it. Many people did not agree with me doing this, but I don't care what you say. Most people that disagree ain't coming anyway. I want to have fun and it's going to be a good day. And I want to thank the people on X. I want to thank the people on Instagram that watched us today. And you know what they say? Um, keep watching the Wiley show. Because you never know what I'm going to say. And who going to check me? <laughs> Somebody gave me this shirt years ago. I never could fit it, but now I can fit it out. Love y'all so much. I got to go rest. Chow, we've been working non stop, but it's good work. So if you want to fund this show and make sure to get us, you know, to help with independent operation, we don't have major sponsors. The Cash App is dollar sign, Marquise Wally 28, Zale Wally Show at gmail.com. If you want to sponsor, if you want to uh, donate, come on, brothers and sisters, and help us operations. We want to thank you all so very much. The Cash Shop, Dollar Sign, Marquise Wiley 28, Zell, Wiley Show at gmail.com. We also want to thank all of our supporters for their love and for their support. We also want to thank um, the moderators for holding it down, the members. We thank you all so very much. Members, we're going to do our members only sometime next week because this week is extremely busy. Uh, so we will go schedule that for next week. Um, we could do another zoom meeting for the month of April. Thank y'all so very much. Now, uh, now they have to push the bill first and it will take years. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Biden approved us for 60 million for the bridge. Oh yeah. Wow. 60 million. Uh, is that enough or do y'all need more? I have to do more details about that. We will keep y'all updated about the bridge and we're going to keep you updated about Diddy, Diddy, Diddy. We will see y'all later on the broadcast. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Yes. Little black boy, you're beautiful. Little black girl, you are enough. When times get hard, always remember to put God first. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.